What are some of the biggest questions and expectations for the Miami Hurricanes going into spring practice this year? Let's take a few minutes and talk about it. What's going on, Canes fans? It's almost that time. Can you smell it? Spring practice is right around the corner and kicking off Monday, March 4th. So before it gets here, make sure that you are subscribed to this channel so you can stay up to date with everything going down. Now, my plan for this video is just to briefly talk about a few of the biggest questions and expectations but I'm not actually going to do a super deep dive into each one of them because I'm actually going to be doing a live stream this Friday on March 1st at 9 p.m. Eastern time. And during that live stream, we're going to fully discuss these questions and expectations. And I'm not going to bring up all of them in this video, but it's just going to be a few of them just to, you know, kind of let you be thinking about them over the next 24 to 48 hours. And then during the live stream on Friday, we're going to fully break it down and discuss them in detail. Now, right out of the gate, I must mention what will be the biggest storyline all spring. And of course, that's the quarterback position. All eyes are going to be on Cam Ward. Will his impact be enough to elevate the entire offense to a totally new level? Will he be more vocal than TVD was? Will we see progression throughout spring in the chemistry department between him and the wide receivers? Either way, Ward is expected to be the savior QB, so he definitely has a lot of pressure on his shoulders. And I fully understand that this is early in his Miami career. I mean, we're talking spring practice here, but it all starts here. At spring practice. It will also be interesting to see who else outside of Xavier Restrepo steps up in the receiver room. Who is going to be that clear number two guy? Because last season, Restrepo led the team in both receptions and receiving yards. So has Jacoby George gotten his act together in the offseason? Is Isaiah Horton going to have a breakout year? Or maybe, just maybe, is a young guy going to step up and make a name for himself. And speaking of young guys, do we see any of the early enrollees from the 2024 class earning lots of reps? Now, I know that it's just spring, so a lot of times we as fans tend to overreact to depth chart stuff and who's taking reps with the first team offense and second team and you know whatever order you want to put everyone in. And I always tell people to not pay too close attention to that because the coaching staff is going to experiment. That's what spring is for. So sometimes, you know, you'll have guys uh, rotating in pretty consistently, but it's still very fun to keep an eye on it. And you can kind of watch and tell, even with just limited clips and things that we get on social media, because, you know, Mario Cristobal doesn't allow a lot of viewing during the practices, but you can kind of really tell who's putting the work in and who's making strides and is showing a lot of improvement. And honestly, even more so than the freshmen coming in, who else from that 2023 class is going to step up and earn more playing time? Because at this point, it's going to be their second year at the college level. So theoretically, it's time to take that next step. I'm talking about guys like the Washington brothers, Jaden Wayne, Ray Ray, Robert Stafford, and the rest of those guys. And I am definitely going to be keeping a very close eye on the linebacker room and the tight end room this spring. Will Arroyo finally be 100% healthy and ready to go? And who's going to step up in that tight end group and show that they've got certified hands? I know that, you know, there was a big debate over uh, does Dawson ever throw to the tight ends? Does he ever draw up plays that utilize them in the passing game? Was maybe Tyler Van Dyke just not looking their way, but then when he did, they dropped the ball? Well, here we go. Reset, right? We have a, a new quarterback with a slightly different style. Dawson hopefully tailors this offense around him. It's a new year, new season, new Miami. 
So it's time to find out. I personally believe that Dawson could, you know, use the tight ends a little more in the passing game. But when you do go back and watch the tape from 2023, oftentimes there were tight ends that were running routes that were open and Tyler Van Dyke never looked their way. But again, the counter argument here is there were plenty of times where he did throw the ball their way and they dropped it. So it's time for Dawson to be better drop some more plays using the tight ends. Hopefully Cam Ward is not only lasered in on Restrepo. We love Restrepo, but let's spread the ball around. And when it is thrown to the tight ends, we need some guys that are going to actually catch it. And I've spent the last couple of seasons hyping up Arroyo. I keep saying it's time for the Arroyo show. And I've been wrong every time because it's been tough. He's not been able to stay healthy. Hopefully 2024 is the year. And the linebacker room, of course, Malanoa is going to be the anchor back there, but who else is going to make their presence felt this spring? I also think one of the more important questions when talking about the quarterback room, so we're we're rolling back to what we initially talked about, is who is going to be the clear QB number two behind Cam Ward because, of course, Cam Ward coming in with this massive deal from Washington State through the transfer portal, he is going to be given the keys to this offense. And when I say he would have to royally mess up to not find himself the starting quarterback at the start of the season, I mean, basically, he would have to have a season-ending injury before the season even starts. That's the only way Cam Ward is not going to be starting. So who's going to be that guy backing him up in case he gets banged up and needs to come out for a few plays or needs a game or two to heal up? These things happen. So who is going to be that guy? I personally think that it will probably be Jakari Brown. Uh, I mean, he makes the most sense at this point in time. I mean, Emory Williams is going to be coming off of that injury. I've heard that he's healing up well. It was his non-throwing arm, but you still want to be very careful with him. So he might see some limited reps at times, possibly. We don't know yet, but there would be limited contact, which is usually the case with quarterbacks anyways. But Emory Williams coming off of injury. And then Reese is going to need a little bit of time to adjust to the higher level of competition. So I think Jakari Brown makes a lot of sense. People are going to argue that he's... He's had his shot. He had a chance to play against Rutgers, and they weren't able to get the win, but Jakari didn't have the same level of supporting cast in that bowl game. You know, there are a lot of guys that opted out, guys that were going to the NFL, plenty of guys that were injured. So I think Jakari makes a lot of sense here. Now, obviously, this could change by the time the season gets here, but we're only looking at spring right now. And this is going to be Brown's second year in this offense And outside of Cam Ward, he does have the most experience. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. Anytime we mention quarterbacks, I always start to go off. I have a lot to say. And I really have a lot more questions and expectations going into spring. And I want to do a deep dive. But as I said, more so the point of this video is just to bring maybe four or five questions or expectations to light just to kind of mention them so you guys can be kind of pondering on it a little bit letting it simmer and then on friday we'll do the deep dive and then i'll actually give my opinions i know that i'm just throwing them out there and not giving opinions on all of them but we're going to save that for the stream on friday so i just wanted to throw through a few of them out there for this video and we can discuss it down in the comments go ahead and let me know maybe some that I haven't brought up yet. I've, I've easily got five to seven more. I'm just, I'm not mentioning them here. I'm saving them. But we can go ahead and talk about the ones I did mention down in the comments. You guys can bring up some others and we can just chop it up down in the comments. I'm really excited for spring. I'm going to do as much coverage as I possibly can. Last spring, I had to have two surgeries one regular surgery and then an emergency surgery right in the middle of spring practice. So my spring coverage was very limited. This time, I'm, I'm really going to try to pop off. We're going to have a lot of fun, lots of live streams, lots of updates. And it's just awesome because it's, it's football. It's football, but not football, right? It's Miami on Miami, a lot of non-contact. Uh, y- you know, I, I, it's, just, it's fun. It's fun, though, because we get to talk football again. And it's almost here. 
It's almost here. And before we know it, the real season will be here. So let's chop it up down in the comment section below. Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to do a full deep dive on these questions and expectations. Remember though, guys, we're all one big happy college football family. But at the end of the day, I got to say, it's always better when you get to rep the U. Coach Coop, peace out. I'll see you guys on Friday.